everyone, this is KC from OVM and I am doing a requested video on how to clean costume jewelry and how to replace rhinestones. So this is kind of a, a teaching video and it's uh, been requested quite a few times and here's a tray of jewelry that I'm working on right now and I'm going to show you a few of the pieces and how I do it. So this is just a few of the things you need when you're replacing the rhinestones. Of course you're going to need rhinestones. This is the glue I use to adhere the rhinestones. I'll tell you why I use that later. I also have these tiny little pick tools um, to get the rhinestones out and to help clean some of the stuff. And also I use this dental wax that people use for braces. I mold it in my fingers to how I need it um, for the... Uh, picking up the rhinestones and placing them. It makes it a lot easier. There's expensive little sticks you can buy for this, but this is a lot cheaper and you can use it for your pictures and placing jewelry too. You can see it's really cheap. I just buy it off of Amazon. And this isn't a brand I endorse or anything. It's just what I buy. So here I have just a piece of wax I'm molding in my hands and I'm warming it up. And I have these other little sticks that I've had for a long time, and I just replace the wax on the end of it. Um, and I can make it bigger or smaller, more pointy, however I need it, and it's very easily replaced. And that's what I like. Or you can buy one of these, and they're only like 6 or $7, and it has a small end and a big end. But the problem I have with these is that they lose their stickiness, and I drop a lot of stones with them. And I just don't think they're as good as the wax, just in my opinion. But hey, buy whatever you would like. So here's like my collection of rhinestones harvested um, or cabochons harvested over the years. I also buy them at uh, estate sales because a lot of people harvest them as well. So when I find other people who do this, I try to buy that collection and of course just uh, I buy new old stock from overseas and uh, I think it's great to have this many when you're always repairing jewelry but obviously you can buy these online as well. Also this takes a while so try to start on a full tummy. Can help me? Oh food, okay. Enough nursery rhyme torture. We're going to start with this Eisenberg Ice uh, Christmas tree that is missing some of the rhinestones. And I'm just going to show how to replace them because this piece doesn't really need to be cleaned. So I'm just going to take my Gorilla Glue that I've already shaken up really well. And I'm going to place a little bit of it in. This is one of those uh, wax boxes. Um, but you can use paper plates or whatever. And I'm just going to place just a little bit in there because... You don't need a lot. It doesn't dry out fast. This will actually sit here for a long time. It dries pretty quick when it's applied in a thin layer, but when it's kind of thick like that, I can use it for a good 45 minutes while I'm working. Now I've already uh, picked out the stones and made sure they fit in the place before I even start gluing them. I think a lot of people put glue in there and like, oh, this stone might fit. But I always check to make sure it's right, it matches the color right, it's the same sort of age and shape because there's different types of rhinestones out there. So um, I've made sure they fit and I'm going to take this tiny little uh, pin so I can precision place it in the cup. I know a lot of people buy the things with the tiny tips and they just squirt it in there and that's going to give you a big glob and go over and it's not going to look right and I just I don't think that's the correct way to do it. Um, I know it's not the correct way to do it. I've tried every way and this is the best one. And the best part about this glue is that it's a gel so it's not slipping and sliding all over the place and coming out and being like really drippy and it's not going to squeeze out of the end and because I hate that I hate when it squeezes out of the side it means you've put too much in there you saw how much I put in there just a tiny and you just kind of swirl it around you do not need a lot especially if you're using this glue 
um, because it is going to stay in there, and it's going to stay in there better than when it was first placed in there. This stuff is extremely strong, and another great thing about this is, is it doesn't turn yellow. So it's a very important thing about that glue as well, because when we see a lot of yellow stones, it's because people used glue that turns yellow or attracts dust. And now you can see, after I focus, that it just, it's just that easy. I mean, the stones match beautifully, everything looks great, and I mean, they're already set in there, and I am just, I love this brooch. So I just picked this piece up at Bella Rustina. It's a 1951 Coral Craft piece. But it was missing quite a few stones, and a lot of them are yellowed, and there's dead stones, like right here in the bottom, you can see it's like black, and that's called a dead stone, at least that's what I call a dead stone. And what happened is, is the um, metal on the back of the rhinestone has been tarnished or is like disintegrated, so now the stone has this just uh, look, you know, this black look, and... I just take, yeah, see, most of them are very easy to get out. And I just take that little pick that I used for the glue, and I just uh, scoop it out. And I kind of start at the side and just barely push. I'm not trying to damage anything. And I just barely push to see if it'll come out easy. And when you see me scraping around in there, I'm trying to get that um, metal backing out of there. Sometimes you'll see that it's black. Um, but you want to get it out so that once you adhere the new stones that you're going to put in there, that it's not adhered to this already tarnished stuff. And you can see there's stuff coming out of the little cups. Now I'm going to show you how to clean this piece a few different ways, um, just so you can kind of understand how this piece needs to be cleaned. And this is a gold-plated over base metal. It's not over sterling. And you can see here I'm just trying to get some of the looser or yellowed stones out. And sometimes I like take the little needles and twist them around the edge of the stone. Because when we see yellow stones, the dead stones are usually original. Yellow stones though are usually have been replaced by somebody else and the glue is uh, the glue has attracted dust and just pollutants and, you know, body oil, anything. Um, and we can see a lot of the yellow stones in here. I'm not the biggest fan, but I'm going to show you how to make this piece look brand new. I am very economical in my tools. I was just raised that way. And this is just a baby toothbrush. So it's a soft bristle. It's not like a hard bristle. So I just, you know, get like a five pack for a couple bucks from Walmart. And I just call this dry brushing. I usually don't do this to um, gold plated pieces. However, um, I'm showing you this because you want to do this to like ones that have like the gold paint and not gold plated. And I, you don't have to do this with sterling either. Um, but dry brushing, you can see all of this junk coming out of it. Some of the stuff from the... The cups are coming off, there was some glue falling off, there's a lot of debris in the little edges, and it really gets in there, and it'll even take out some of the loose rhinestones, if there's loose rhinestones in there, because you don't want those anyway, you just want to replace those or glue them back in so they're not falling off when you're wearing it. So here's how I'm going to clean this one, since it does have a gold plating and it's not like the paint and I'm not worried about getting it very wet and it doesn't have um, specialty stones all in it. I am going to uh, just have some warm tap water. Sometimes I get it hot. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, I guess whatever you can stand. Um, and I am just going to use a toothbrush and clean it and I literally have um, so many different toothbrushes sitting right here in my bathroom. I have this soap that I love. It's just a natural soap and it really doesn't matter though. You can use natural soap, Dawn, 
Um, I also use toothpaste, so any of that is okay to use on this. So I just had it in a little bit of water and I lightly brush it. I do not brush it extremely hard, but you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, but if you're worried about losing rhinestones, it definitely is. Um, you can't see it, but I have a little catch underneath um, the stopper right there. So I don't suggest you do this without um, a catch, especially when, you know, you are worried about losing rhinestones. And you definitely want to rinse it off really, really well. Um, you don't want the soap residue on there. Another thing I do is I do place it in pretty hot water and let it soak for a little bit and then I dry it really well with a rag, paper towel, um, whatever you have handy uh, because the glued that's been re-glued re from somebody else, this is going to loosen the glue up on it a whole lot and helps rinse any of the residue off and you have to dry it really, really well. Because if you don't dry it really well, it's going to ruin um, part of the brooch. Because this is costume jewelry. It's not, you know, just a piece of gold that's going to dry off and be perfect. So I get it back to the work table. And you're going to see how easy it is for the, those glued stones to come out now. You can already see them moving. I know it's hard because it's really hard to get that big of a close-up. But look, they're all coming out together in one piece. Um, that glue um, a lot of times can pull three or four stones out at a time because people have layered it over the top and when you do that it's not um, it's not gonna look right. That's why I don't like glue overflowing and I think putting the glue in there is precision like in the cups precision would be best. And once you soak them all these stones will come out a whole lot easier. You're not going to have to really, like, pick really, really hard at them. And like I said, soaking it um, is really good for the gold-plated ones, sterling ones, rhodium-plated, um, especially when you're replacing the rhinestones uh, because you're not worried about it. But if you do have rhinestones um, that you're not planning on replacing in there, then go ahead, still do exactly how I had just done it, but afterwards, take like the cool of your, like if you have a hair dryer that has a cool setting, and dry it so you're making sure all the crevices and everything's dried out, or stick it in front of a little fan. Just make sure it dries quickly and completely so you're not tarnishing the back of these rhinestones, or getting water seeping into places it shouldn't be and setting there and ruining the piece. But you can see I'm just sitting here picking them out, which is very important on replacing them because you don't just want to replace the ones that are missing, you want to replace the ugly ones too. And you can see all the glue that was all over this thing. And this is a lot of vintage brooches. They have this glue um, glued stones in there and a lot of times it's like almost just like Elmer's glue or E6000 and you know just there's all different types of glue that people use and I don't like most of them. There was one I used to use from Hobby Lobby all the time but they stopped making it and that's when I changed to that Gorilla Glue which took me a long time to find too. But you can see they'll just Man, they just fall right out now. And this is the easiest way to get them out. And you're not harming anything by cleaning it under the water either. I'm also making sure once the rhinestone comes out, then I'm getting like the, the metal backing from the rhinestone out of the cup too. Because like I said before, we don't want to adhere the new rhinestone to the old metal backing of the uh, old rhinestones. So I've picked most of the rhinestones out and here's like a little bit of them. I like to still kind of keep them nearby to kind of measure the new ones I'm going to put in by it and also if I need one they're still there. 
So I'm just showing you guys the difference between a dead rhinestone and a regular one out of the cup. I'm going to turn off the light so you can see it a little better. And it's really a dead rhinestone doesn't have that metal backing on it anymore. So it's just taking on the color of anything behind it. And the one that's still good still has that backing and is still bright and shiny. Since I had to remove so many rhinestones, I'm going to get one of my uh, parcels out. Um, from Czechoslovakia that has some fire polish stones in there and um, this is really great because they're all going to look the same and unified and these are old vintage stones from the 50s so I can use these and still be um, basically original and you can see there's a lot of them and I can use them to replace it and it's going to be beautiful don't forget you have to check the sizes before you glue them. See, so I haven't even glued those in. I'm just making sure they fit and that's what's important because we have to make sure they're the right size. So I've checked my sizes and now it's time to start gluing. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the Eisenberg ice piece. Um, I am just going to precision place little um, dots of glue in each of the cups. And then I get the little wax stick um, and put the pieces in there that I already know are sized. And please, I can't stress enough how much size <laughs> matters uh, because if you have a stone that's like pushing out too much or something, it just looks silly and completely uh, throws off the rest of all your hard work when you're replacing these rhinestones. <laughs> So this video is already pretty long and I'm going to break it up into two parts because I don't want it to be an hour long video. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget part two. It has a whole lot more of the cleaning in there because um, I know a lot of people want, were wondering about the cleaning. So I hope you enjoy that and check out the winners. Thank you.